The Divide is a dangerous place. Luckily, there's many new weapons that we can use to keep us safe. But what if, instead of using a shoulder-mounted machine gun or red glare rocket launcher, we use something that most carpenters would take to work? In today's video, we'll be finding out if you can beat Lonesome Road using only a nail gun. Before going any further, let's take a look at the rules. Enemies must be killed using a nail gun. Other weapons used to progress the main quest are fine, provided no enemies are killed. The difficulty will begin on normal, however this can change to suit the challenge, so if it's too easy, it will be increased, and vice versa. With that said, let's get started. We all know how these challenges begin. I choose a name, shout out to Theo Wilson, assign special points, tagged skills, and left. The first thing I did was grab the snow globe from the cemetery, headed to Camp McCarran via Black Mountain, grabbing the NCR uniform along the way, entered the strip, grabbed the snow globe from the cocktail lounge, and sold them both to Jane for 4,000 caps. Now if you're wondering, why am I collecting caps before entering the DLC? It's because I wanted to buy some nails to avoid running out. Little did I know this wasn't essential, but let me tell you what I did despite not having to. I headed for Hoover Dam, snuck past Deathclaws, raced a Lake Lurk across Lake Mead, died, respawned, got chased by Deathclaws, died again, then decided to go to Hoover Dam via Camp Golf, which was much safer. I grabbed the snow globe from the front desk and spoke with Quartermaster Barden, who was said to sell an almost infinite supply of nails. What I didn't know was that he only sells them after passing a speech check, which I couldn't pass, and wearing an NCR uniform didn't change a thing. So I returned to the strip, entered the Tops Casino, leveled up three times, sold another snow globe to Jane, and returned to Hoover Dam to find out that the speech check only appears with an accepted reputation. Now I wasn't going to run around completing quests for the NCR, so I went to a different merchant, the Gunrunners. I then waited three days at a time and bought just over 2,000 nails. With that done, it was time to head for the Canyon Wreckage and enter the DLC. Well, almost. To give me a fighting chance, the DLC recommends level 25 or higher, so using console commands I did just that. Selecting skills and perks I thought would be beneficial to a lonely carpenter such as myself. Now inside, I looked over the long road ahead and entered into Hopeville Missile Silo, where I found Eddie. Ralphie! Fly far, fly fast! Companions are not allowed to kill. If they do, I have to reload an earlier save and try again. But what he was allowed to do was open the commissary. With that done, I had access to more nails. Sadly, there was no nail gun, but there was one in the room ahead inside a toolbox. On the third floor, Eddie activated the silo's mainframe, doors opened, and sentry bots poured inside. While the nail gun is weak, it does have a large magazine, and the fastest rate of fire out of all one-handed weapons, meaning it cuts through health bars like butter. If the butter was frozen, and the knife was plastic, that is. Several broken limbs, almost a thousand nails, and four sentry bots later, I was standing outside the silo. Ulysses gave me a booty call, and I was on my way to his temple. The next obstacle was the marked men inhabiting the Hopeville missile base. They weren't particularly difficult. Marked men, both standard, ravagers, and hunters, went down after maybe 40 to 50 nails. I decided to leave the difficulty at normal for now, just to see how things went. Eddie unlocked another commissary, I bought more nails, and this time some riot gear. I then detonated the first warhead that I had to in order to progress. It was here I decided that as long as no enemies died as a result of the warhead exploding, then it was A-OK -okay to do so. Using a key I snagged from a dead marked man, I opened the gates and entered into their guard post. I did find a reloading bench and had been collecting scrap metal, which could be used to craft nails. So I did just that and came across another warhead. 
Using the detonator, the warhead went boom, and from the ashes, marked men appeared. After the battle, I felt it wasn't quite the challenge I was hoping for, and increased the difficulty to very hard, and just in time to face off against the first of many named marked men. Blister took hundreds of nails before dying, and I did notice my health dropping quicker than a cheetah with diarrhea, but it was all the more satisfying. One more essential warhead detonation later, and I was entering into the collapsed overpass tunnel. As soon as I entered, I saw a dead NCR trooper and a nail gun just beside him, which I took. I told Eddie to wait, because I didn't want his help, not for this, anyway, and slowly crept my way through the tunnel, until a tunneler and a more hearty hulking tunneler emerged from the rubble. I started shooting and climbed to what I thought was out of reach, but I was wrong. One thing I did notice, other than their mighty health bar, was how easy it was to cripple their limbs. Once their legs had been taken care of, I was able to safely back away and take them out with relative ease, at least until the game crashed and I had to do it all over again. But I did make it through to the other side. On the high road, I walked maybe 20 steps until more marked men, one of whom was Beast, another named Foe, attacked. Beast almost had me at one point, Many MREs later, I managed to knock the shoulder-mounted machine gun from his hands, and you best believe I picked it up before he could. Now defenseless, I used vats, aimed for the head, and nailed Beast to the floor. This little skirmish had my nail reserved down to triple digits, which I did not like the sight of. So I fast-traveled back to commissary to replenish. Further along, I was shot at by a scout with a flare gun. How dare he! And then I was introduced to what I would consider the second most annoying thing in the entire DLC. Satchel Charges Finally on the other side, I found advanced riot gear and descended the rubble to the worst section of the high road. <laughs> I tried a couple times to kill a Deathclaw, but it wasn't going to happen, so I tried sneaking instead. Died, and then tried sneaking again, but this time with a stealth boy. This worked until it didn't. The final Deathclaw seemed to have some kind of super sense. I put some distance between us, lay in wait as the Deathclaw and Tunnelers duped it out, and snuck away before there was any more trouble. But there was always more satchel charges. And another named marked man, Bonesaw. He did a ridiculous amount of damage, provided he could reach me. In the end, I crippled his legs and stayed out of reach until he could take no more. In order to progress to the next part of the quest, it is mandatory to launch a missile, for some reason. Until you have, the door to the Ashton missile silo simply won't open. So I pressed the button, the missile exploded mid-air, and as far as I can tell, no one was hurt. So we're all good. This was awful. Encountering tunnelers on very hard with only a nail gun is one thing, but encountering tunnelers on very hard with only a nail gun while stuck on a lift 
is an entirely different situation. I somehow managed to survive, not dying a single time, might I add, and couldn't get off the ride quick enough. Now inside Ashton's silo, I navigated through the old world passageways, restocked, descended further into the earth, killed a few more tunnelers, and used the stairs of a still standing hotel to reach the outside. On the roof of the Sunstone Tower, Ulysses made another appearance, introducing me to the Divide. The Divide was not a happy place. Lots of marked men, tunnelers, and warheads, but I was able to find the Elite Riot gear, so not all was doom and gloom. It took two warheads to reach the cave, no casualties either. This is, as far as I can tell, the tunnelers' main living quarters. More of them are found here than anywhere else, including their queen. The same tactics used thus far was enough to get me through. I was hoping that once the queen was dealt with, the others would run away. But no, they just kept coming, and boy, was there a lot of them. My reward for perseverance was a visit with the Autodoc. With the dark underbelly of the tunneler's home beneath me, Ulysses said the magic word, Namaro and Eddie was gone. For the first time, I was truly alone. Although I was glad that I no longer had to worry about Eddie getting in the way. Once again, my provisions were running low, so I restocked and returned to fight the marked men, including Blade, although he seemed more interested in dancing than actually fighting. Deathclaws, which I was not able to kill, although I did try. Warheads, one of which I had to time in order to not kill the marked men patrolling above. Tunnelers who followed me through water, which led to the discovery of this jazzy sound effect. And of course, more satchel charges. Nailed it! But it was done. I had made it to Ulysses Temple. Inside, I took care of security the old-fashioned way, rescued Eddie so I could use the commissary, and approached Ulysses. It was not a great start. Ulysses is accompanied by a very annoying pair of iBots. Both attack and one heals him, ensuring a steady restoration. Not good. I did try killing the iBots, but they respawn indefinitely unless they're shut off. For a time, I tried to kill him without turning them off. Mostly because I was so exhausted that I completely forgot that you could. The farthest I managed to get to was the point where the marked men enter the room. After that, it all became too much for me and my nail gun to handle. So why didn't I switch off the iBots? Good question. You need either a skill of 100 in science or repair in order to do so, and my science skill was 65 and Repair, which was slightly better, at 75, meaning I was still 25 points short, and it would be quite some time before I leveled up once, let alone the two times it would take to amount that many skill points. I was at an impasse. I could lower the difficulty, but I really didn't want to. I had just spent the last six hours on Very Hard. I had come too far to change it now. Luckily, I had a plan. I returned to the Mojave Desert for a few items. I gathered two Dean's Electronic skill books, received surgery for an intelligence implant, stole a Robco jumpsuit, bought Mentats, and found a Fixing Things magazine. By combining all of these things at the same time, I could get my repair skill to 100. The downside of this little excursion was my Elite Riot gear had broken. But I was ready. I returned to Ulysses' temple, put on the jumpsuit, took Mentats, and read the magazine. As soon as Ulysses turned hostile, I went for the terminal, turned off the medical iBot, and died. This was because I was wearing the Robco jumpsuit, which offered no protection. The second time I was more fortunate, but died again. The marked scout armor I had picked up on the outside was still no better than the jumpsuit. Reloading, I bought new armor, used it to repair the Elite Riot gear, and disarmed the medical robot. We traded hits so many times. I mashed the hotkey for Stimpaks and watched his health slowly but surely 
decline. It was such a relief seeing it go down and stay down. Pretty soon, marked men entered the room, and I tried using the medical bot station for cover, but that didn't go so well. Repeating the same steps as before up until the same point, I avoided the edges at all cost, kept my distance, and got Ulysses to a new stage for the first time. He was now using a stealth boy, making it slightly harder to hit him, but I was still able to target him with vats. Nails dropped to triple figures as Ulysses became closer and closer to death. I won't lie, I left the room before I did something stupid. Instead, I watched the season finale of Snowpiercer and returned once I had calmed down to finish the challenge once and for all. Ulysses was finished, but with this triumph came another challenge. The quest isn't over until the last marked man has fallen, and one thing that the marked men can do when near a source of radiation is regenerate lost health. I had prevented one target from regenerating, only to be presented with another. To top this off, I was almost out of nails. Fortunately, the center of the room near the consoles is just far enough away from the radiation to stop them regenerating health. The only problem is they sometimes run away, and then it's back to square one. It took several attempts to kill three marked men, but it still wasn't over. Another one had come through the door, and Eddie, who I left intentionally out of the way, was now in the way. I ran over as quickly as I could, and did all the damage I could possibly muster, all the while thinking about what I would have to go through again if I ran out of nails. But with eight nails remaining, the last marked man fell, and the quest was finally over. Heading over to the consoles to disarm the missiles, I allowed Eddie to be the hero he wanted to be, and the challenge was officially complete. So to answer the question, can you beat Lonesome Road using only a nail gun? Yes, yes you can, but I don't recommend it. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.